Over the past few thousand years, the Mediterranean has been at the center of some epic civilizations, from ancient Egypt and the Phoenicians to the ancient Greeks and the Tartesians, the shores of the Mediterranean Sea have played an important role in trade and communication. And let's not forget the Romans, whose empire stretched across the basin and beyond. It's hard to believe that the geological reality of the historical and modern day Mediterranean didn't always look this way. In fact, at various times in the very ancient past, it was almost totally dry. In this video, I'm talking about the Zanclean mega flood that filled the Mediterranean basin following the Mycenaean salinity crisis more than 5 million years ago. Five point nine six million years ago, during the Mycenaean age of the Miocene epoch, the Mediterranean Sea looked a bit different to how it does today because of plate tectonics. It sits on the conversion point between the African plate and the Eurasian plate and is a seismically active region. When we talk about ages and epochs, we are, of course, talking about geological time. The International Commission on Stratigraphy breaks down geological time better than anyone. So if this interests you, I've linked their website below. But put simplistically, from around halfway through the Miocene epoch to the present day Holocene looks like this. The arrow shows the point at which the flood happened. 5.96 million years ago, the Mediterranean was not connected to the Atlantic Ocean via the Strait of Gibraltar like it is now. It was instead connected by, roughly speaking, two channels, the Betic Corridor and the Riffian Corridor. Today, these areas correspond with the Baetic Cordillera in Spain and the Rif mountain ranges in Morocco, respectively. I couldn't find a clear image of these corridors that was related to this particular subject, so I took this one from a paper I've referenced below on the trace fossils of the Riffian Corridor. That's why there's additional annotations on it. From 5.96 million years ago, these corridors started a cycle of closing and opening, causing a partial drying up of the Mediterranean during the times when they sealed off the Atlantic Ocean. However, around 5.6 million years ago, they closed up permanently. This, together with an incredibly dry climate, led to the almost complete desiccation of the Mediterranean basin over the next 1,000 years. The only water to remain was in a few hypersaline lakes or basins, as they are usually called. Examples of these are the Malaga, Sorbas, Niar, and Vera basins in southeast Spain, the Caltanis Seta in Sicily, and the Pissori basin in Cyprus. Evidence for this massive drop in sea level, measuring more than 3,000 meters, has been found in several places. Since the mid 20th century, seismic surveys have revealed a geological feature that sits between 100 and 200 meters under the sea floor. Drilling of this feature brought up cores containing floodplain silts and numerous evaporite minerals, such as halite, better known as rock salt, gypsum and anhydrides, which are normally laid down when seawater dries out. More than 1 million cubic meters of salt have been found deposited there. However, pelagic sediments, which are found in sea floors within an open ocean that have been found embedded in these evaporite minerals in the Western Mediterranean, show that the drying and flooding took place in cycles and wasn't the result of one straightforward event. Evaporite minerals are also found in areas that are, that are now above ground, but that were formed in basins on the periphery of the Mediterranean, such as this gypsum in Spain, where the Sorbus Basin once sat. Since rivers emptying into the dried out basin were able to cut their beds much deeper than they are today, they left behind canyons which are now submerged. One of these has been found in the Nile Delta at a depth of 2,500 meters, and one has been found at the mouth of the Rhone Valley at a depth of 1,000 meters. It's also interesting that fossilized cracks have been discovered in different parts of the Mediterranean. These must have formed when muddy sediment was exposed to the sunlight during a drought. This period of desiccation is now referred to as the Mycenaean salinity crisis because of the amount of salt deposited through evaporation. It led to the extinction of marine life in the basin and caused a faunal interchange of land-based mammals between the Iberian Peninsula and North Africa. 
Interestingly, some species, such as the goat antelope Myotragus, the large shrew Nesiotitas, and the giant dormouse Hypnomus, made their way across the dry land to the modern-day Balearic Islands, where they remained stranded for 5 million years. It was the Strait of Gibraltar opening suddenly 5.33 million years ago that allowed the Atlantic Ocean to gush in and create the Mediterranean Sea that we still have today. Incidentally, when I talk about the giant dormouse that made its way to the Balearic Islands, I mean that the dormouse became giant once it got stranded there. Gigantism and dwarfism are usually found in animal species that have become isolated on an island for a long period of time. This is because smaller animals are able to get bigger due to the lack of predators and the lack of competition for resources, whilst large animals become smaller because of the limited food sources available. So finding these fossilized fauna tells researchers a lot about how the environment had been when these animals were alive and helps them to understand the local geography. For example, this is how paleontologists know that Malta used to be connected to Sicily by a land bridge, and this is supported by evidence from other disciplines. So back to the flood. It's thought that the Strait of Gibraltar opened up because of tectonic subsistence possibly combined with other factors such as erosion and sea level rise. There's also the idea that a small stream may have passed through there, joining the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, and that this gradually cut deeper and deeper until seismic activity opened up the strait completely. Research carried out by geophysicist Daniel Garcia Castellanos and his team found evidence that a 250 meter deep and 200 kilometer long channel that had been found in the Gibraltar Strait through borehole drilling was likely carved out by the flood. This enabled them to calculate how fast the Mediterranean basin had filled up. According to their calculations, the water flowed in fairly slowly for a few thousand years, but then something triggered a catastrophic flood, with 90% of the basin then filling up abruptly over the course of several months at the minimum or two years at the maximum. This flood is sometimes depicted as a waterfall, but the researchers have found that the opening of the Strait of Gibraltar likely caused a ramp to form, measuring several kilometres in width, and with a gradient of between 1 and 4% sloping eastwards. Their model correlates well with evidence for the quick re-establishment of marine fauna. The Strait of Gibraltar would have looked a little bit different than it does now when it first opened up, but erosional retreat following the flood changed the morphology into roughly how it is now 5 million years later. Another study carried out by sedimentary geologist Van Dijk and his team at Utrecht University analyzed how the flood may have connected the western and eastern Mediterranean. During the Mycenaean salinity crisis, it's not clear to what extent the various basins were connected. Paratethian ostracods have been found in marginal Mediterranean sub-basins, and these are usually present in a mix of local river water and anomalo haline water, which is basically salt water. So these imply that high water level conditions must have existed at times. However, the fact that large amounts of gypsum are present, and this could only precipitate in low water, shows that almost complete desiccation must have occurred for long periods. Van Dijk and his team analysed the Caltanissetta Basin in Sicily. According to their study and modelling, the Zanclian flood overcame the Gibraltar Strait and filled the western Mediterranean, reaching the level of the Sicily sill. It then overcame this sill and established a strong eastward current connecting the western and eastern Mediterranean before terminating to the east of the Malta escarpment. This escarpment is a submerged geological feature measuring 290 meters in length and with heights of as much as 3,500 meters. It's basically a giant underwater cliff. Seismic studies have shown a depositional body at this escarpment, which can be linked to the Zanclian flood. So the Mycenaean salinity crisis and the Zanclian flood via the Strait of Gibraltar are not in question. But a lot of studies have looked into the mechanisms and timescale of these phenomena, and a clearer picture is emerging. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.